triangles are actually three-sided figures that have got three vertices and three angles. Imagine of sides. Triangles are actually divided into three types. The first one is actually the scalene triangle. This is the triangle that has got three different sides. The second one is the isosceles triangle that has got exactly two sides of equal length. And the third one is actually equilateral triangle. I am sure you already know about this. This is a triangle that has actually got three sides as equal. Now talking about the division of triangles on the basis of their angles. You know, so here we've got three categories again. The first one is acute angle triangle. Here all the sides are actually less than 90 degree. And the second one is actually right angle triangle. I'm sure you know this. Yes, this is the one where one angle is actually equal to 90 degree. And the third one is actually the obtuse angle triangle. Here one angle is more than 90 degree and it looks something like this. Now you one triangle which is actually equal to the other triangle. These two triangles will be called congruent to each other. You know, you have so far learnt about different congruency criterion and now it's time to talk about some amazing properties of triangles. The first we're gonna start with is the angle sum property of a triangle. Now the question is, what is the angle sum property of a triangle, right? Don't worry, it's pretty simple, okay? So basically the angle sum property of a triangle is nothing, but it just states that the sum of all the angles of a triangle is equal to 180 degree. Let's look at the diagram here, okay? Let's, I have drawn a small triangle for you here. The triangle is a triangle A, B, C, right? Here we've got three angles, angle one, angle two, angle three. Now, the angle sum property states that no matter what triangle it is, no matter what triangle, okay? Here, angle one plus angle two plus angle three is actually going to be 180 degree. Take any triangle you want to, this property stands still. Remember that, okay? Now the time is to prove this, as simple as that. So what I've done is I've done a minor construction out here, okay? I've done a line L which is parallel to BC. I've just done a line L. Now when I do this, I get two different angles, angle four and angle five. Here, clearly, Angle 2 is equal to angle 4. Are you getting it? Yes, here angle 2 is equal to angle 4 because they are alternate interior angles. Because these two are parallel lines, this is acting as a transverse. So these two are alternate interior angles. And by that rule, they are equal to each other. So angle 4 is equal to angle 2. Similarly, angle 5 is equal to angle 3. By the same property, parallel lines and transverse, so alternate interior angles, right? So now we have five equal to three and four equal to two. And we clearly know angle five plus angle one plus angle four is equal to 180 degree because it's a straight line. These three angles comprise of it, right? So it's angle five plus angle one plus angle four is equal to 180 degree. Now the point out here is angle five is equal to angle three and angle four is equal to angle two. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to replace angle 5 and 4 with angle 3 and 2. So that way my final equation becomes angle 1 plus angle 2 plus angle 3 is equal to 180 degree. And hence the angle sum property of triangle is proved which actually states that no matter what triangle you take, okay, the sum of all the three angles of the triangle is going to be 180 degree. Right champ? Great. Now quickly. Okay, let's move on to another example. Hey, so now it's time to study about another property. But before that, let me get the other thing for you. Okay, so now what I have is another triangle out here. Okay, this triangle. Now this is an isosceles triangle where we have got A, B, C as the three vertices. Here, A, B is actually equal to A, C because it's an isosceles triangle, right? Now, the property states that in an isosceles triangle, the angles opposite to the equal sides are equal to each other. What does that mean? That means that here the angle B is opposite to AC and angle C is opposite to AB, right? So here, these are the equal sides and the angles opposite to them are these two. 
So now we need to prove that angle B is equal to angle C. That is a theorem and we just need to prove it, right? It's simple. What I've done is I've done a simple construction here. I've constructed an angle bisector for angle A here. The angle bisector is AD, right? Now, if I do that, I get two equal angles here, right? Angle BAD is equal to angle CAD. Simple, great. Now, I've got two triangles also, if you notice. ADB, ADC. These are two triangles, right? Great. Now, what I need to do is that I'm going to prove that these two triangles are congruent to each other. And how am I going to do that? It's very simple. Here, the first thing is BA is equal to AC. Isosceles triangle, two sides are equal. Exactly. And I just proved it's an angle bisector. So angle BAD is equal to angle CAD. Getting it? And here AD is the common. So AD is equal to AD, right? So here we have got a SAS congruency criterion. So by that way, we have got triangle ADB is congruent to triangle ADC. If that is the case, we know that the corresponding angles or sides are equal to each other. Exactly. So for that, we have got angle B is corresponding to angle C. So hence, it is proved that angle B is equal to angle C, which actually proves our theorem that if I've got an isosceles triangle, the angles opposite to the equal sides are actually equal to each other. Are you getting it, champ? Great. Hey, so now we've got one more question. And for that, I have one more triangle cut out for you, which is here. Okay, see this. So now I have got an isosceles triangle here where the angle A is given. It is equal to 100 degree. And here AB is equal to AC. Right, because it's an isosceles triangle. Exactly. The question asks us to find out angle B and angle C. The value of angle B and the value of angle C. So can you do that, champ? Oh, confused? I'll help you out. It's simple, okay? It's actually based on the property that we just studied right now. The first one we studied is angle sum property. And the second one we studied is actually that angles opposite to equal sides of an isosceles triangle are equal to each other. Remember that? Great. Now, it's an isosceles triangle that clearly means angle C is equal to angle B, right? Or you can say angle B is equal to angle C, right? Great. That's the first step. Now, second thing we need to establish is that we know angle A plus angle B plus angle C is equal to 180 degree. That is because of the angle sum property of the triangle, right? So here, angle B is equal to angle C. That is something we established before. So clearly, it will be 100 degree plus angle B plus angle B is equal to 180 degree, which is nothing but equal to 100 degree plus angle B into 2, which is equal to 180 degree. That will be equal to twice of angle B is equal to 180 degree minus 100 degree. So angle B is going to be equal to 40 degree, right? 80 degree divided by 2, so 40 degree. Great. So if angle B is equal to 40 degree, angle C is also equal to 40 degree because we just established that. So clearly the value of angle B is 40 degree and the value of angle C is also 40 degree. So now one more quick question. Look at this diagram out here. Here we've got a triangle ABC which is isosceles in nature. So it's an isosceles triangle. Here AB is equal to AC and we have two points X and Y such that AX is also equal to AY. What we need to prove here is that BY is equal to CX. It's very simple, okay? What we need to do right now is that I'll pick up the two triangles that are formed here and I'm going to take it to this side. The first triangle is AXC and the second triangle is AYB. Here in both the triangles, if you see, we have actually got AB is equal to AC. Angle A is equal to angle A because that's a common angle. Look at this diagram for reference also, right? And we also have AX is equal to AY. So here we've got a SAS congruency criterion. So by that criterion, we have got triangle AXC congruent to triangle AYB. And if that is established, we know that all the corresponding parts of the two triangles are also equal to each other. So that way, we can actually prove that here XC is equal to YB and hence the solution for you. So champ, we just studied about how in an isosceles triangle, the angles opposite to the equal sides are equal to each other, right? 
Now we're going to study the reverse of this theorem. The reverse is if you are given a triangle and their two angles are equal to each other, so the sides opposite to these two angles are also equal to each other. For example, let's assume this triangle here, triangle A, B, C. Here we have angle B is equal to angle C and the theorem says that if angle B is equal to angle C here, AB is also equal to AC here. So let's prove that, right? So here the given is triangle ABC, angle B is equal to angle C, right? What I'm going to do right now is I'm going to draw a perpendicular bisector from angle A. And I can do that, okay? And if I'm doing a perpendicular bisector from angle A, I have here got angle BAD is equal to angle CAD and also angle ADB is equal to angle ADC and it is equal to 90 degree because AD is perpendicular on BC. You can clearly see it in the figure here, right? Great. So here, if I consider two triangles, triangle ADB and triangle ADC, what do I have? I have got angle BAD is equal to angle CAD. I have got AD equal to AD and I also have got angle ADB is equal to angle ADC which is equal to 90 degree. So clearly by the ASA criterion, I have got triangle ADB is congruent to triangle ADC and we know that corresponding sides or corresponding parts of these triangles are actually equal to each other. So by that logic, we have AB is equal to AC. As simple as that. So see, we just proved if I've got angle B is equal to angle C, that way we actually have AB is equal to AC. Are you getting it? Great. Now before proceeding further, okay, you're going to have one simple question on your screen. So try doing that. The sum of all the angles of a triangle is equal to 180 degree. Angle 1 plus angle 2 plus angle 3 is actually going to be 180 degree. Take any triangle you want to, this property stands still, remember that. In an isosceles triangle, the angles opposite to the equal sides are equal to each other. We have got a SAS congruency criterion. So by that way, we have got triangle ADB is congruent to triangle ADC. We have got angle B is corresponding to angle C. We have actually got AB is equal to AC. Angle A is equal to angle A because that's a common angle. Look at this diagram for reference also, right? And we also have AX is equal to AY. So here we've got a SAS congruency criterion. We can actually prove that here xc is equal to yb and hence the solution for you. If you are given a triangle and their two angles are equal to each other, so the sides opposite to these two angles are also equal to each other. So clearly by the ASA criterion, I have got triangle ADB is congruent to triangle ADC and we know that corresponding sides or corresponding parts of these triangles are actually equal to each other. So by that logic, we have AB is equal to AC.